Oh, OK, OK. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tyler Barker. I serve as the coordinator within the Office of Parent and Family Programs here at Georgia Tech. I would like to welcome you to our What's Buzzing at Georgia Tech webinar series. As you know, or for those who don't know, we started a new webinar series last fall with many of our different campus partners and different offices on campus, just talking about a variety of things, um, programs and resources to help your student be successful. And we thought that we had such great reviews from it that we would continue it for this spring semester, offering about two to three webinars on a monthly basis. Today, we have a very special guest and a very timely guest. Uh, today we have Michael Lauder, who's a communications um, specialist and manager um, within the Georgia Tech Career Center. Uh, for those of you all who don't know, this week is the All Majors Career Fair at Georgia Tech, so it's a very timely um, webinar that we're bringing, but we also have some great nuggets that can kind of help you have some dinner table, um, some Zoom, Skype conversations with your student, as they talk to you about the next steps. We know Georgia Tech students are high achievers and they're always thinking about the next. If you have any questions for Michael as he's going through his presentation, please feel free to utilize the Q&A chat box, which should be off to your right. Once again, if you have any questions for Michael, please feel free to utilize the Q&A chat box and then we'll get to them after the presentation. If you give me one moment, I'll upload our PowerPoint presentation and then we will begin. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to Michael Lauder. Good afternoon, everybody. Like Tyler told you, I am the communications manager for the Career Center. Typically in these presentations to parents, I take you through photographs. It's a nice little slide deck. I show you about the resources and opportunities we afford your students from day one here at Tech enable what we seek to do is enable each student to be able to connect with his or her career. What I spend the entire time doing is actually telling you why your students should get involved with an internship, why they should work while they're enrolled. But today I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to give you some behind the scenes information, a little bit of backstage info, uh, actually, much of it can be characterized as how we make the sausage. So instead of me talking to you about why this is a good thing, I want to show you about how we go about it. And hopefully during my presentation, the why will become apparent. Before we get started today, I kind of want to set the stage. I want to tell you a little story about myself. I'm not real fond of speakers who refer to themselves during their presentations, but I think you'll understand why I tell this story when I tell it. I've been at Tech for 19 years. I began in two, fall of 2001 as a technical communications instructor. I taught classes on business communication, all the aspects of it. And so traditionally what I do in that particular class, I begin out with a word usage level, a word choice level, then we go to sentences, then, then to documents. Always in my technical communications course, I had a week devoted to career development, which meant resume, cover letter, finding companies, that kind of thing. I came here in 2001 from the business school at Tulane. So I start my course, in the fall. I do everything all along and long about week four was career week. So I did resumes, cover letters. We talked about all of it, job postings, every bit of it. And at the end of the week, the following Monday, they turned in resumes, cover letters as if they were applying for a real job. And a student on the back row raised his hand. And by the way, for those of you who have never taught, I can just tell you this. A lot of times the best comments you get will come from the back row. So the student raised his hand and he said, all of this is great, Professor Lauder, but why didn't you do it in time for the career fair? 
The Georgia Tech All Majors Career Fair, we have two of them. I'm going to talk to you about them today, but the big one, our flagship event, is always held the second week of September. So I had done my career prep stuff a week or two later. So I quickly learned what to do on this campus. Your student will quickly learn what to do as well. Uh, like I tell people a lot of times, it's as if it's in the water here. Students want to connect with their career. They know they have to do career documents. They're really interested. So I'd like to show you how we do it. Next slide. So what I want to show you today, some of the aspects, some of our connection points. I want to take you through some of these. There will be some slides devoted to details of it so you can see pretty much how we put all this together. Yes, this uh, yesterday and today we've had a virtual career fair. I will be taking up details about that in a moment. But in ways to connect, all students have an account on CareerBuzz. CareerBuzz, it's just careerbuzz.gatech.edu, is the online portal for jobs on this campus. It is the Georgia Tech student's best friend for finding jobs. There are many other things that go on on CareerBuzz, however, than just job postings. Also, students can find out about workshops, events, information sessions, everything that's going on in this campus pertaining to careers in all of the majors. So career buzz is always a great thing. I spend a lot of time with first year students and I always tell them this is the first thing you should do. Take two minutes, activate your career buzz account. You will be glad you did. Um, I'm going to talk to you in a moment in depth about career fairs, but we have two all majors career fair. Uh, the large one is in the fall, the second week in September. Then we also have one that's usually the second or third week in January. We have to shop for spaces large enough to have them. Know this, employers love to come to tech. Um, I created a weekly workshop series on this campus called Find, Land, Succeed. They're done every Thursday during the free hour. Tech has a free hour at 11 o'clock when there are no classes. And so I traditionally do this so that I can get optimum participation. I'm going to talk to you about those in a moment. GT1000, as many of you know, is the first year seminar. We have a strong partnership there. I'm going to talk a little bit more to you about that, what we do there. Also, we have outreach in all six colleges. Your student is going to see the Career Center in his or her email queue many times. They're going to find out about what it is we're doing. We connect with all students at all levels. Um, also, I head up a workshop program, and so we do workshops for student, organ student professional organizations and student alumni groups. They will reach out to us or we reach out to them and ask if they want a workshop and then they, they can tell us what sort of workshop they will like. I'm going to show you some titles of that later. We also have a request line. If a student organization wants to do something, they can fill out a request online, and I will usually it's me who does it. I will respond to them the next day. We also have a partnership with what's known as ComLab on this campus. We have a vibrant communication center where all students can go to get help on any aspects of communication. And so they help us with this work as well. I also have a strong relationship with peer leaders and resident advisors in the dorms. I workshop them personally. We talk to them about all the opportunities so that they will be talking to your students about this as well. Uh, employers love to come to this campus when things go back to normal, which will probably be in the fall. Companies will be returning to campus in this building. Uh, today is my in office day, by the way, so I'm in my office here at Tech. In my building in the basement, we have 45 interview rooms. Employers love to come to Tech. Uh, in addition, we have advisors and counselors and staff members here in the Career Center who are always available to all students by appointment. Student has to just get on our website, find out the advisor assigned to his or her major, and book an appointment. It really is that easy. So let's get into this. I want to show you what all is going on. Next slide. Let's talk career fairs. 
The Georgia Tech All Majors Career Fair held fall and spring is our flagship event. The one in the fall typically has a huge attendance, the one in the spring not as much, but all students are interested. All students of every level are certainly included in it. Now, let me talk to you about some numbers. In 2019 in September, the Fall All Majors Fair, I had 300 companies and 8,000 students over two days. In fall of 2020, when we converted to virtual, we had roughly one third of those numbers. So one third of 8,000, of course, probably we had around a little bit over 2,000 students, about 2,500 students and about half the employees, about 150 to 170 employees this fall. For this event that was yesterday and today, we have about 70 companies. I would imagine we will have probably about 1500 students attend. Students will, employers will come, they will have a booth, a table, several people manning it, and they talk to students. Students come and discuss what's going on in the job, what all they have to offer. I'm going to show you in a moment a little bit about that interaction, but recruiters love to be able to press the flesh, talk to students. Now, I will tell you, uh, there was a time when first year students just simply didn't get hired. But about 10 or 12 years ago, I and people like me said, yes, but because we were working with first year student resumes and we could say, but a first year student has this aptitude and more important, a first year student many times has the exposure. So why aren't you interested in hiring them? So we kind of changed the mindset of employers. So yes, for anybody seated out there wondering, can my first year really get a job? Absolutely. And I'm going to show you how we help them do just that. But there was a time when first year students were just simply not as attractive. In addition to these all majors career fairs, uh, many majors, many of the colleges have their own career fairs in addition to these. I think there are roughly 35 career fair events on this campus fall and spring. But of course, the two big ones are the all majors career fairs that we sponsor. So let me kind of get into some details with you about how we prep students. Next slide. Everything that's going to be available in the way of a job at a career fair will be from all companies hiring across all majors, all level of students, and what goes on at a career fair, companies are looking for interns, co-ops, and full-time employees. So what I wanted to do initially was set up preparation for all students of all levels. I set up the weekly workshop series, Find, Land, Succeed. I began that about eight or nine years ago. Uh, typically it's every Thursday, but we have other times for it as well. And you will see on this slide all the major topics that we include. Now, what I will do, I head up a group before any major career fair. And so the big workshops will be, will include resume crafting, career fair prep, how to introduce yourself to a recruiter, and how to respond to tell me about yourself. I'm about to show you how we do all of that in a moment, but it's a kind of a large package. We also go over cover letters. It is the cover letter that snags you the interview. I show students how to craft cover letters formulaically. I've worked on cover letters for about 25 years. Uh, they really, really, really do work when a student knows that the purpose of a cover letter is just simply to show an employer that you have three of the skills they seek in their job posting. It really does work. Companies have kind of given up requiring cover letters because people don't always know what they're about. Um, I always caution students, a cover letter is not a place for you to flatter the company. They couldn't care less about your flattery. Also, it's not a place where you tell me you're dreaming about going to work for me. The purpose of a cover letter is to show me you have the skills to be able to work for me. Uh, I go deeply into interview tips with students, how to respond to behavioral questions formulaically, how to anticipate response, how to pitch themselves throughout an interview, 
we go over uh, LinkedIn profile basics, how to create your profile, how to network, how to approach LinkedIn. And a really, really popular one that I conduct is negotiating salary and evaluating the job offer. I show all students how to negotiate salary and I have a great track record with this. There was a time when companies were not interested in negotiating salary with students, but I and other people sat down trying to figure out how to, to frame a good argument. We discovered how to do it. We showed students how to do it. And yes, they can negotiate salary. It really does work. I also show them about how to be a professional from the first day on the job. And, and we have a financial advisor who does finances for first time employees. All of these topics, whenever I have a workshop, I assume I have three levels, three levels of audience grad students, upper level undergrad students, and first year students. So everything is couched specifically to those three groups, handouts, all the rest. Next slide. I told you that we have a strong presence in GT1000, which is the first year seminar. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what it is we do. I personally workshops, workshopped about 1,000 of the 1,200 students that were enrolled in GT1000 in the last six months of last year. So we reach all of these students. Uh, it's a one hour workshop. It entails showing them how to craft a resume that will have five or six sections. I talked to them about cover letters. As you can tell from the way I was talking about them before, I'm excited about doing that. I also show students how to introduce themselves to any recruiter and then also to respond to tell me about yourself. A number of years ago, uh, because of course I always observe at career fair, I would see students standing in these long lines and then when they would get up and have face time with a recruiter, it seems like many of them just kind of limply hand over their resume, make minimal eye contact, limp handshake, and stand there wordlessly. Well, that's not the way to get a recruiter's attention. So I decided, OK, it's not enough to have good documents. I want students to be able to talk about it. So I'm going to show you in a minute how I do just that. Also, if you will think about how we have all reinvented ourselves, you, me, your student, everyone else, recruiters have had to do that. So I decided last March I wanted to always include a response to tell me about yourself because I think this is what's going to be easy for any recruiter when your face pops up on his or her screen and his or her face pops up on your screen. I think it's really easy. So I show students just how to do this. First year students are given all of this information. It's a lot, but I take it step by step and formulaically there are lots of handouts involved and students are really, really prepared after this workshop. Next slide. Probably all of you are thinking, huh, what's a first year resume look like? Every one of you, your student can craft a resume that's going to have this information. They can and they should craft it. You'll see five or six sections. Probably uh, the first thing I always assure students is first year students is that at least 90% of the information they include on this resume is going to come from high school. If they didn't include any high school information, probably their resume would just be a few lines long. So I always show students the very first foundational item is use what you have. I spend a lot of time in my job coaxing and coaching. So after talking to students, showing them that they have this information in all the segments of their lives, they are able to come up with a resume that looks just like this. And like I said, at least 90% of the information on this resume is coming from high school. Your student will have this kind of information, I promise you, because it's part of what it took to get in here at Tech. They have been busy people. Next slide. So after I've shown first years how to craft this resume and I give them examples and we work through all the sections, talk to them about cover letters, then I talk to them about how to introduce themselves to a recruiter. This is a sample of one of my slides that I use. So I know my audience here at Tech, they love formulas. 
So I make everything as formulaic as I possibly can. So you see I'm doing it step by step here. Smile, tell me your name, your major. Tell me why you chose your major. That's an interesting thing, everybody, because I have discovered over the years that not all students know why they chose their major. The one thing I always tell students is don't overthink it. There's probably a basic, even primal reason why you are the major you are and be ready to tell a recruiter that in 25 words or less. I'll show you an example of it in a moment. Pick a scale that you have because always you're going to be describing yourself according to these skills you've been picking up. Tell me what you did with it. Then pick another skill. Uh, everybody understands we have two types of skills, students and us. We have our technical skills, but then we also have what are called essential skills. Essential skills are basically human skills. You can think of them as communication and or leadership, but trust me, your tech student has both kinds of skills. So after you've introduced yourself, that's enough talking, four or five sentences, transfer the energy. Ask a question. What do you have for somebody like me? So let's look at an example of it. Next slide. This is a slide that I give out to all students. I have handouts. In regular times when I do my workshops in person, I have many, many handouts that all students are given. This is a typical introduction that a first year student can use every time. I also tell first years that they might tell people what sort of impact they want to make, what field do they want to work in. And you'll see how I have it set up here. If a student is not comfortable saying I'm experienced with a certain skill, he or she could very well say I'm exposed to it because an employer is not looking for in-depth experience, certainly out of a first year student. They want to know what the first year student's been exposed to. So I sat down and thought of every way that these students could describe themselves. Then here's how I've implemented this skill. Then I have an essential skill, communication, leadership, adaptability, design, and here's what I've done with it. This is what your student will do in terms of introducing himself or herself to a recruiter. Right now, because it's cyber, they can do it when the person's face pops up and their face pops up on the other one's monitor. In the days when, when we return to normal events, they will extend their hand and shake, and this will be their introduction. It works every time because they're using nouns, verb phrases that recruiters are attuned to and they're listening for. Next slide. That's not enough. I want students to be able to answer the question, tell me about yourself. We all know about that question. Um, I worked in the private sector for many, many, many years, and I hired a lot of people. I always began an interview with, tell me about yourself. Tell me some things about yourself you think I might want to hear. I liked doing it because I could always tell who the serious candidates were and who they were not. A serious candidate has looked at the job, knows kind of what skills are going to be necessary to do that job, and can tell me about those skills. This is a particular slide that I use when I'm describing it for students. Uh, by the way, if I can, everybody, I want to break through the fourth wall here. I create some of the ugliest slides in America. A PowerPoint slide should have minimal content, but I want students to always be able to use these slides for reference material afterwards. So I put a lot of information on a slide. Uh, I don't suggest anybody else do that. I have a real reason for doing it. Yes, I know how unattractive this slide is, but I want students to understand skill, 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 skill. Next slide. So what I tell them in terms of how to couch, how to phrase your tell me about yourself response. The first thing I always tell students is <clears throat> when someone says tell me about yourself, they do not want to know what your sun sign is. They couldn't care less what your favorite sports team is or how good you are in the kitchen or even how many siblings you have. It's about telling me how you picked up what some really marketable areas in your life and what you've done with them. So notice this bulleted slide. 
I tell them, don't do this, don't ramble, don't gush, but think about who it is you're talking to. So I always have students take their introduction, expand it, explode it, and turn it into a tell me about yourself response. So I have them, what I say, mine your background, figure it out these skills, tell your story through how you picked up skills, put these skills together, knowing full well, these are some of the skills you'll be using on the job. Then after you've done all of that, you can tell me how you want to use these skills. It's what I call an adjusted aspiration because they're going to be talking to different employers in different fields. Um, I also think adaptability is a good is a good trait, is a good skill that students can talk about. So I think that that could be interesting what they have adapted to COVID if they during these times if they want. And you'll notice, I think there are probably about 29 bullets on this slide. The very last one is, yes, you may bring up your family if asked, but I want your story to be about what it is you've been working on, what you've worked with, and kind of what, how you've set out your goals. So let's look at a first year example. Next slide. All parents out there, your first year student can create something that looks exactly like this. Probably your first year student will be able to create something even better than this response. But if you all will take a look at it, and I spend a lot of time showing students, this is a current example that I use for first and second year students. You notice this person is telling me why he or she is a mechanical engineer, because I want to know how things work. I like the logic of it. I think if you scratch the surface of any ME, that's what you're going to get. Notice they're not overthinking it. OK, begin to tell your story. I'm interested in first year students can always begin their story by telling me what they're interested in. So that was robotics. I also taught myself to code two summers ago. I always tell first year students, I want to hear any time that you have taught yourself something, a recruiter's ears will prick up because that means you are a self starter and it keeps you from saying something stupid like I am a self starter. Instead, you're going to say I taught myself too. Also, um, parents of first year students, there's coding. Coding in the hiring world is what's called a gateway technology. If a recruiter hears that you taught yourself to code, that recruiter is going to know, OK, pretty technologically adept. So I don't have to worry about that part. So we've talked about the technical skills. Now give me something essential. I'm a good writer and I can speak Spanish. All right, so you've described yourself. Now tell me how you want to use these skills. And this is a typical aspirational statement that most students can can do. I'm interested in say sustainability and what I want to use is my math prowess and logic to solve energy renewal problems. Now what's great about working through these introductions is I also show students this can also be your LinkedIn about profile verbiage. First paragraph, tell me what you're good at. Second paragraph, tell me how you want to use it. Every one of your first year students with a little bit of coaxing, a little bit of coaching can craft something just like this and probably much better. So now I want you to see how this tell me about yourself is going to grow and evolve with your student. Next slide. OK, yes, once again, the worst slide in America, I know it, but there's psychological value when I show this slide to, this slide to students. They understand the layering of the details of the skills. So you can see how we pick up on the idea. Where we got started with it and now by the time that a student is into the fourth, fifth year, he or she will have picked up a lot of things along the way. Possibly also they've been interning. So you see a number of things that I have in bold here. These are things that students pick up at work, but also in their coursework and also in their projects and their coursework and in their research. So you see how this paragraph set up. Same pattern. Description according to the skills and then the second paragraph is going to be about their adjusted aspirations. So you see how everybody can be able to do this, how we show students exactly how to do it. Next slide. All right, 
that's a lot of backstage information. That's a lot of how we make the sausage. It's probably more than you wanted, but I wanted want parents to see what we are doing with their students. So the title of this slide says it all. Yes, they can always find us and we know where to find them. Always they need to be checking our website. Simple career.gotech. Career buzz. Make certain your first year students have all activated their accounts. They've been looking at job postings according to their major and finding out other information on career buzz. We send out lots of individual campus notices invitations to events that can come independent of what they would be finding on career buzz employers like i told you before love to come here we have information sessions in addition to on-campus interviewing probably they will find out what companies are coming to campus on career buzz when we return to that by the way companies are not coming to campus this semester Workshop schedules. If your student feels he or she has a deficiency in a certain area, they really, really need to come to some of our one or all of our workshops. I find that when students start coming to one, they like to come to several. Uh, they'll find out about our workshops on our website, Career Buzz, and also academic advisors in the colleges, in the departments will send out notices. We have active outreach in all colleges. I always tell first year students, that they will see me or someone like me at some point because we're over there giving them workshops. We have a request line where student organizations can reach out to us and I or somebody like me will respond the next morning. We do lots of workshops for student professional groups, lots of workshops for student alumni groups. I provide all of the information. It's set out. These are basic instructions that all students get. But for certain groups, I will couch it a certain way. I might be giving women in engineering a few different, a few more refined ideas than I would another group. Uh, perhaps I'm going to say something slightly different for the Society of Hispanic Engineers because I want them to know one more thing that they can use something else. So it's all students are given the same instructions, but we also refine the message as needed. So the point that I make at the end of this slide, at the bottom of this slide, I want all parents to know this. There's no such thing as too soon for a student to be getting a job. Um, first year students, if they have good information, they have good paperwork, if they are able to articulate where they've been and kind of sort of where they want to go, all of them can have an internship by summer. That is the point in this. This is what we try so hard to convey to students, and we have a really good record of being able to do it. Uh, students who say, yes, but if I go to work, what about my GPA? Statistics show that students who intern or co-op actually have a higher GPA than those who do not. <clears throat> Sometimes parents want to know, well, if my student is going to be interning or co-oping, by the way, interning is what students always do. That's the verb. A co-op is a formalized internship at the same company. If my student interns or co-ops as often as possible, won't that mean they have to be in school a lot longer? No. Statistics show that even if you work one semester of every year in a rotating basis, you only have to stay one extra semester at tech. So I think probably all of you can see, yes, I have a lot of rationale backing up what it is that we do. OK, that's a lot of talking I've just done. What about some questions? Thank you, Thank so, you much, so much, Michael. Let's transition to those questions. Let's see what see we got. got. Parents and family uh, members, please. Uh, uh, Publish your students in the Q&A chat box get to them. In the daily, I see that there is a cover workshop. Is this design landscape workshop? Yes. I, I thought yes. workshops were on Thursday at 11. Uh, we also have them at different times. 
we try ideally to have them Thursday at 11, but also we've tried some other times as well. This is a workshop that I give several times a semester. This particular one is on Wednesday. Uh, yes, I will be conducting it. Our next question is, can this slide deck be made available? I think so. If you all want a copy of these slides, I kind of thought some of you might want to, so I talked to Tyler about it. Certainly you may have these slides. Yes, uh, if, if you would like a copy of these slides, please email us at parents at gatech.edu and we'll, we'll get them over to you. Other questions? That's a lot of information. Surely I wasn't that perfect at presenting it. I bet you have some questions. Let's see, we have one more. And a second or a third year students take GT1000? Uh, no, they cannot, but they can take part in all of these workshops. Uh, you don't have to be in GT1000. They will get the same information in another one or two or three workshops. A parent would like to know, when are you personally teaching the next three day boot camp? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I actually I have resigned. I will be leaving here the end of March, but I'm busy training people to do those boot camps. Yes, everybody, a parent who knows a little bit about me has heard about the boot camps. We do a three night intensive session before May, before the career fairs where I incorporate all the topics. It's about an hour to an hour and 10 minutes, three nights in a row, and so they get all of this information. I really like doing it that way. Students also like it. I get huge attendance, but someone's going to be doing that for me this fall because I will be gone. So sorry to hear that, Michael. Wish you the best of luck in your next endeavor. Um, if you can't make the Wednesday workshop, is it recorded? It is recorded. Uh, so when a student reaches out to me or someone and says, I can't make it, what do I do? They should register. If they will register to attend, they will get the recording, the slides, and the handouts the next day. And they can register at career.gotech.edu. Yeah, uh -huh. there, you can look it up on our website and go to the workshop schedule. It'll say something, I believe, on the left hand side about virtual workshops and click on that workshop and just register. Register nothing more than your name and your email. Perfect. Do you have resources to help students who are considering a major change? I do not do that work, but we have somebody here in the Career Center who does. Her name is Lainey Damon. Last, last name is spelled L-A, I'm sorry, D-A-M-O-N. And Lainey does help people who are considering changing their major. She does a lot of counseling work like that. So you can reach out to her and make an appointment. Do you have, uh, okay. Is this, work, is, is this workshop also done in CS 1100? Um, CS 1100 is comparable to GT 1000. They do have my examples. They do have my material. They probably are adhering pretty much to what the rest of us are doing on campus. Yes. Perfect, perfect. Thank you for sharing that. All the questions we have so far. Um, if you will just give a few more moments. If you have any other additional questions or concerns or any comments for Michael, please feel free to drop those in the Q&A. Actually, if everybody would like to tell us how you thought about this presentation, this is the first time I've ever done it this way. Uh, I think some of you might be interested, like I said, in how we make the sausage. I think a lot of times parents are almost overwhelmed with some of this stuff, however. So if you think this is a good way to present, please let us know or not a good way to present. Please let us know so that we can make certain that we get all the information to you you want. Also, uh, you all will see that my name and email is on the title slide. 
If you have anything that you'd like to talk to me about, certainly shoot me an email. I'll be happy to entertain anything. Do you or anyone else at GT offer this type of info and career help for students who have graduated a couple of years ago? Um, I do that typically. Yes, I do that as well. Students can reach out to me directly and I will do a little bit of work with them. They also can work with the Alumni Association. We have a very as you as I'm sure you're aware, we have a very active Alumni Association here at Tech and they do have mentors, uh, employers who graduated from here who are ready and willing to help. But I also step in and do some of that as well. Michael, do your workshops uh, work with students who are perhaps rather shy and maybe uh, kind of aren't the most keen in terms of public speaking? <clears throat> what I'm showing students to do is to be able to speak one on one with someone. So sometimes when students say, well, I'm kind of shy, I'm not really sure about this. That's the reason that I set up introductions formulaically, that I show students how to craft these. Tell me about yourself. No matter how shy you are, there's something about telling people what you're good at that kind of springs a little bit more easily from people's lips. So that's a reason that I approach it that way. Um, I assume that I'm always talking to introverts and extroverts. I assume that I'm talking to every kind of personality and every type of communicator, but the way I'm showing people to communicate, every type can use it and do it. Perfect. I have another question. I may have missed the answer. Uh, if your first year has not taken your workshops yet, is it too late to try to secure something for the summer? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I think probably you all can tell after I've been with you about 45 minutes. I'm one of those guys who hates to say no to people. For a first year student, they need a good resume. They need to know to how to talk to a recruiter. They need to be on career buzz. Yes, your student can catch up and do all of that. Um, companies, this is a different year. Companies like to hire as far out as they can in a typical year, which means they're hiring six months out or longer. I think students, I think companies will be hiring up and until May this year, however. So no, it's not too late for your student at all. You probably want your student to reach out to me or someone here to get the ball rolling about paperwork and resumes and cover letters and knowing how to talk to a recruiter. Getting on career buzz, I will take them to the edge and then push. Thank you so much, Michael. And if you wouldn't mind just speaking on virtual uh, interview etiquette, just some tips and just some communication tips as well. We know that we're in a different space. So just some things that you can kind of touch on that are different that you do virtually. Uh, if so, and what that looks like. Um, I do have several slides devoted to this and I decided not to use one of those sample slides in this presentation. Perhaps I should have. So yes, I do address the differences between virtual and in-person discussion. One thing about it, uh, the first thing I always tell students is dress the part all the way down to your shoes. There's something about dressing the part, making you be the part. Uh, I end up having to qualify these comments as well. When I say dress the part, what I mean is coat and tie for men, equivalent for women, no exceptions. Students a lot of times are going to be interviewing with companies that pride themselves on an informal work atmosphere. I always tell students that doesn't matter. You have not been formally invited to join their team yet, so you need to look like a polished professional outsider. Something about doing that, by the way, is going to help people be that, like I said. I always tell students in terms of cyber communication, you really are doing, in essence, the same sort of thing. Uh, you want to make certain that you're sitting up straight in your chair, that you kind of somewhat police your background. In the days before the pandemic, I used to spend a lot of time talking to students about check your background, make certain nothing's in it, that kind of thing. But of course, we all know that's changed. 
there's everything on Instagram and Raider Room and, and that kind of thing. So people are a little interested in what's in your background. One thing that I tell students about cyber, about virtual reality and talking to a recruiter is you can have your resume printed in front of you. You can have your introduction with the blanks filled in, so you don't necessarily have to commit everything to memory. You certainly don't want them to see you reading off a piece of paper, but there are you can use things as prompts that you would not have been able to use at a career fair when you were going there in person. Other than that, there are not a lot of differences. I do tell students, yes, you can look at the screen, you know, but don't be creepy. Don't stare, that kind of thing. But but otherwise, it's interesting. There aren't actually a lot of differences between in person introduction and discussion and cyber in person introduction. Thank you, Michael. And we do have a couple of comments. Excellent workshop. Uh, thank you for this seminar. Our son keeps asking us about resumes, cover letters and interview tips. Glad to know we can refer him to experts. It is apparent he hasn't been using his resources. <laughs> That's the reason we do this. We just want everybody to aware, be aware. And there are many there are many entities on this campus like the Career Center. So we want to make certain your student takes advantage of all of it. And we have another comment as well. Thank you for this presentation. It was very good. I don't think my student is aware of these opportunities, even though this is his second semester and has already taken CS 1100. I might be wrong though, and, and that's OK. You know, students find their way at different times. Uh, it is it is OK. I want to pick up on what Tyler just said, everybody. It's all right. It is all right. Students find us when they need us a lot of times, you know, and not everybody is on a on a timetable. So uh, students typically start out, I think probably about two thirds of the first year class always takes GT 1000, but there'll be a number who do not for whatever reason. Uh, there are other ways that they can get this information. Thank you uh, and Michael, if you could just touch on a few tips and nuggets about how to approach a group interview, um, especially if you're a first year or a second year. Uh, we know that the dynamic is typically to be com super competitive and that you want to outshine the other person. But how should you how should you conduct yourself in a group interview and kind of stand out in a very uh, appropriate way? The appropriate way is to use facts and skills and hard nouns and tell us what you have done with them. The instructions for a group interview, whether you're interviewing as a group of people or if a group of people is interviewing you, that's two different setups there. It's not going to be any different than if you were interviewing face to face. You're always going to describe yourself according to your skills. You're always going to tell people I can do this and this is what I've done with it, which means you can use me too. The idea, all the rationale of everything I've shown you in, the, in this workshop today, tell me what you're good at, then tell me how I can use you. The rationale will always be the same. So what's going to make you a much more attractive candidate is if when you tell me what you're good at, then you suggest to me how I can use you. Students, when they go to interviews, forget that second part. And of course, you know, you're not going to tell you're not going to tell a recruiter you need to use me to do this, this, this and this. You can just simply say I'm good with coding, which means I could help you and then tell me what you could help me with. That's part of pitching yourself throughout an interview. Thank you, Michael. And we have another comment from a parent. What a wonderful presentation. So sorry to see you go. Good luck on everything. Thank you. Um, and lastly, uh, if you could just touch on salary negotiation very briefly. Should my student negotiate their salary and benefits in an internship or should they just wait until they have a official full time offer? And if so, what does that look like? Should they just shoot for the stars like everybody says? kind of aim, aim low or? I'm glad you asked that. I love showing people how to negotiate salary. I love to do it. It's done according to your skills. So a student will be, will prepare for this when they will get the offer. It'll come to them via email and they'll tell them they have three days or five days or 10 days to decide. 
So this is when I sit down and I have students figure out exactly what they exceed that it's going to take to do the job. So let's start at the beginning. A job posting is for the minimum requirements a company would accept for that new hire. Minimum requirements. This is what a company will accept. I tell students take a look at your resume. It's another reason that you have that good thorough resume that I show you to do. There will be portions, there will be parts of it, of things that you're going to be doing on the job where you exceed what it is they require. You're going to make a note of every one of those. I promise you there will be at least one. Sometimes there are up to three or four. Then you will start doing your research about the job. Glassdoor continues to do a good job of that, but that's not the only place where you can find out about salary averages, that kind of thing. So you begin to build your argument and remember an argument is built on facts, numbers, all of those sorts of things. So when you have compiled a few instances anywhere from two to three or four, and I promise you you'll be able to do this, then you're going to set out a very nice polite email thanking them. And then countering the email using the points that you find. No, there's no shooting for the stars here. Uh, don't look greedy, don't act greedy. So what you want to then say is based on the information above, I would like to counter your offer. I tell students a lot of times if this is an internship or a co-op, probably what that means is you want to argue for a dollar or two or three more an hour. For full time students, I always tell them probably you're arguing from two to six thousand dollars more. You're monetizing all of this, but it's all based on facts. It really is cool when you do it factually, and I show students step by step, word by word, line by line, how to craft that email. And I have a great track record, everybody. I get a lot of people a lot more money, and parents should really be pleased about that because that means you can start paying off student loans quicker. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And just a quick follow up, last follow up. Is there an appropriate way to negotiate an extension on the deadline to decide on an offer? We see so many times students have a job offer, but they have another interview that they feel that they, that they killed and they really want to kind of balance the two, but the time the timeline doesn't necessarily work. Yes, yes, uh, this happens a lot. Um, you've interviewed with the company, but the company you really want to go to work for is not interviewing you until next week. So how can you postpone this? I always tell students this is something else you can do politely. It's another business attribute. So all you have to do is shoot them an email, thank them for the offer, but then tell them I need to talk to my family about such an important decision. And you don't have to tell them where your family is or how long you need or anything, but an employer will get that. And about nine times out of 10, they will give you an extension. It probably will be no more than 10 days or two weeks or something, but always by telling them I need to discuss this and you will need to always discuss this with your family. OK, so this is what you do and you get the extension. We do have a hard stance on people. When you have accepted a job offer, you have to stop interviewing. If you, because what happens is a lot of times people will keep interviewing, shop around for offers. They will take they will accept an offer, but then they want an offer from somebody else. That's called a renege, R-E-N-E-G-E, -E, and it's a terrible thing in our world. And so because the companies turn to us and then we have to turn to the student. So you don't want to do that. So always buy time. Thank you, Michael. And as soon as we popped in one last question before we go, thank you so much for taking the time out your schedule to be with us. Is it possible to help a student that has work skills from family business not related to the field they choose? All skills are transferable, translatable. That's one of the first things I tell students. All skills are transferable, translatable. I'm sure that student did plenty of things in the family business that he or she would be doing in other businesses. Yes, I do have students ask me about that. There is no difference. 
there are probably things that he or she did in this business that they would be doing other places. They can list them in their skills section. It's employment. Trust me, all recruiters like anytime they see the word experience on a student's resume. So it's good. Thank you so much again. Uh, so many great uh, nuggets of knowledge shared with us here today. Uh, once again, parents, if you would like to receive uh, the copy of the slides, please email us at parents at gatech.edu so that we can get those to you. Also, please know that this session will be has been recorded, and so we will post it to our website within 24 hours, parents.gatech.edu under virtual recordings. Under, um, excuse me, under the Stay Connected tab under virtual recordings. Um, there you can access this recording um, by tomorrow. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a great afternoon and we hope your students do well this semester and please always feel free to reach out if you need anything. Have a great day. Thank you.